Hey everyone. So two things before we start off with this video. First of all, yeah, this video was a bit long. I realized as I was working on it that it got a little bit out of hand, but instead of cutting a whole bunch of information out, I decided to leave all of it in, but just give you the build right here. If you don't have the time to sit through all of it. This build will have everything you need in most of your games, and it will tell you which abilities to unlock in what order as well as you're playing. You can find this build and copy and paste it in game by simply searching Marco Abrams. I've made it public, so if you want to just go ahead and do that, be my guest. Second up, I've also seen a lot of requests for just straight up gameplay. Maybe with some commentary breakdown, why I pick certain items, why I do certain things. And it makes sense, right? Maybe you want to see if I'm actually any good at the game to begin with. You want to see some credibility to go with this build. Or maybe you just want to learn a few things from just watching someone else play. Uh, so for those purposes, I'll be releasing a whole bunch of gameplay tomorrow on the channel with some commentary breakdown over it on why I did certain things. And they're going to be games where I played on Abrams. Uh, they are played on the previous patch, like most of the footage in this video is from before the last patch on Thursday. That is just what happens with these videos when they take so much time to make. But the most recent patch, aside from some visual changes, didn't actually affect that much in this guide. So yeah, with those two things out of the way, let me now introduce you to the world of Abrams. So you too can start dragging people into the dark alleys of New York City, putting them up against the walls and giving them the double fist special. And I'll let you think about what that really means for a second or two. Smash it up! So, Abrams. Let's start off this video by talking about what the role of this character is in the game. Because Deadlock does not have set in stone roles for each character yet, I think as time goes on certain heroes will be picked for certain roles more often than others. And I think that Abrams falls very much into the classical tank role. As Abrams, it's your job to initiate fights, disrupt the enemy team as much as possible, maybe distract them, protect your teammates, and set up kills using crowd control and single target burst damage. Abrams is pretty strong early on in the game, the moment he gets one or two items in the lane, and the moment he unlocks his second ability, he starts to become a bit of a lane bully, and that power spike only continues until deep into the mid game, where as soon as he gets a few of his core items and maxes out his stun, he'll be a menace towards any enemy getting a bit too far on your side of the map. Abrams' main job will be to constantly go around the map, look for picks, help out some teammate that maybe needs some more time to get online and need help beating their lane. Abrams is on lane. Three on, uh, three on boot. What? What the fuck? Oh! Yeah, they've been roaming. And hopefully carry all of that momentum into the mid to late game, where Abrams falls off a little bit in comparison to some other heroes. Now the reason he falls off is mostly because he is really good at punishing bad positioning. And at the end game, even when players are out of position, they usually have a lot of mobility tools to get out of the way and not get caught. Abrams struggles particularly against heroes that have a lot of in-air mobility, uh, something like Vindicta for example, or Great Talon, or heroes that have a lot of disruption. Viscous would be a great example of that. So yes, the big blue fist is countered by an even bigger green fist. I might be fine. Oh my god, I got beat the fuck okay, up. Okay, time to melee, okay. And now that you know the role, now that you know what Abrams is supposed to be doing, uh, let's just take a good look at his basic kit and see how we're going to be doing that. Your first ability is called Siphon Life. And this thing puts a cone in front of you that deals damage to anyone caught in the range, and it converts all of that damage to healing. And yes, this is only a cone, not a full radius around Abrams, like I thought for the first 10 games that I played this character. So it's very much like a Warden ult. Make sure you're facing the opponents when you're using this, or else you will get zero healing whatsoever. Abrams' second ability is his bread and butter, it's his infamous stun. You can press it to charge forward, dragging anyone with you that is caught in the radius, and stunning them if you collide with a wall. His third ability is a little bit less flashy, it's actually just a passive that regenerates back some of the damage that you took over an X amount of time. You get back 16% of the health over 18 seconds, but that's in the current patch and that is constantly changing. The ultimate of Abrams is this thing where you launch yourself into the air and ground slam back down, stunning everybody caught in the area, which I definitely think is one of the better teamfight ultimates in the game currently, for a whole bunch of reasons, we'll get to that soon. 
And when it comes to which one of these abilities we should be upgrading or even unlocking in the first place, well, I think Abrams' ability skill pad is a, a bit boring. In the end, I will be the one still standing. I, for one, with the build that I'm using, the thing that I'll say in this guide is that you should always unlock your passive first. I know that the stun is probably way more flashy and way more fun to use, but from my personal experience, looking at it from a laning perspective, it isn't really worth picking up the stun going first, because most players typically aren't going to be caught in a position where you can stun them right off the bat. What most players will do with the very first wave of creeps, they'll just play super safe, try to just get all of their 300 souls, and especially against an Abrams, you're not gonna really run up to him and try to poke the bear. Without the extra survivability from his passive or from items, Abrams also can't really afford to just run it down either, and that just makes the stun very difficult to get use out of right at the start of the game. Also, uh, for some reason, Abrams has the lowest base health regeneration in the entire game, uh, together with Lady Geist at 1 health per second. The unupgraded passive brings that to 2. So yeah, for that logic, I go to passive regeneration first, and then the stun second, and then siphon life third. The full upgrade patch usually looks something like this. I put all of my points into all of the level 1 upgrades for each ability. It takes 20 seconds off of the stun and the siphon life. And it takes 40 seconds off of the ultimate ability. And just for one point, that is some crazy value. After I've upgraded all of my abilities once, I usually max up my stun first. I feel like the stun upgrades are just crazy good right now. The second upgrade allows you to run much further. And the last upgrade gives you a crazy amount of weapon damage the moment that you collide with an enemy using the stun. Now you might be surprised hearing that because it says 5.5 weapon damage bonus. That does not sound like a whole lot, right? But the big thing to note here is that this is not a percentage. It's a damage increase that is applied per pellet to your shotgun, of which Abrams has 9 per shot. So doing the math, that's about 50 damage extra per shot. If that still doesn't impress you, that is about as much damage as you would get with a basic mag and a glass cannon combined. Now, of course, as the game goes on and as you stack more weapon damage items and as you level up your character, your gun will naturally start to increase in damage as well. So because this is just a flat scaling, this upgrade becomes relatively weaker. But this is also why we pick it up early. After I max out the stun, I usually max out the ultimate ability. Again, simply because the maxed out ultimate comes with a really strong effect. This time it gives you unstoppable, which more or less is just another free 6,200 item from the store. And in my opinion, one of the strongest ones in the game. This unstoppable, by the way, is granted the very moment that you cast it. So you can even use this to remove a lot of debuffs. And the unstoppable effect will stay with Abrams all the way until he lands with his ultimate and then for three seconds after. So you can really do some damage right after you land without having the fear of getting stunned or silenced or anything. After the ultimate, I usually choose to upgrade the passive because the last upgrade for the passive again is pretty strong. It increases the amount of damage that is regenerated by 9%. And at this stage of the game, I usually also end up having bought healing booster, which then makes me regenerate a fat 31% of the damage that I've taken. At the very end, I usually max out Siphon Life. And the last upgrade is pretty strong because it basically doubles the damage, which means that it also doubles the healing. But it's also not as reliable. You have to be close to people to hit it. Players at the end game can play around it a lot easier. And the passive regeneration is just more reliable, especially in situations where you're struggling. So yeah, I, I max this out last. I don't put a lot of priority on Siphon Life. So that's it for the abilities, but that is not what makes this video so long and complicated, because that would have to go to the item shop category. You've already seen the build that I've prepared, it was at the start of the video, but now we got to the part where we're going to look at each of these items and talk about why I choose these to be in the build to begin with, and in what situations you want to take each of them. There might also be some items here that are missing that you probably would have expected to see, items like charged melee. And there might be some items here that even come off as a surprise. But I promise we'll go over everything here and by the end of it, you'll have come to understand my reasoning for it. And if you then still disagree, well, you can always modify the build. So let's begin with the first item that I almost always take first in the lane. It is not going to be melee lifesteal, it is not going to be restorative shot, but instead it is going to be headshot booster. And I know that that sounds a bit strange, but just let me explain. The way that Headshot Booster currently works makes it extremely strong, in my opinion, 
on shotgun characters or characters that don't need something like high velocity mech to confirm orbs to begin with. The description of this item says that every 7 seconds your next headshot on a hero does 40 extra damage. And the reason that this is so strong is because, unlike Mystic Shot or Restorative Shot, Headshot Booster does not activate until you actually hit a headshot. And what that means for shotgun characters specifically is that if you happen to just hit one pellet of your shotgun randomly on the opponent's head, they get chunked for 40 extra damage. Now this is important because most players are good enough not to get close to Abrams in the lane. And they will try to win by simply out trading you from a distance, maybe with some abilities. Now Abrams doesn't really have any ranged abilities, so he can't really poke back other than by shooting his gun. He does have a good amount of health regeneration, but he doesn't have a way to poke back. Headshot Booster allows him to do that. Every 7 seconds he can shoot back with his shotgun, and even if the opponent is a bit out of range, and the damage wouldn't have been that great, they still get chunked for 40 extra damage. It is important to keep in mind that it's not always 40 damage flat. The headshot booster does fall off in damage as you get further away from the opponent, so you cannot just hit them for 45 damage across the lane. But Abrams' shotgun does a surprising amount of damage per pellet at range still. The damage falloff on this gun isn't that aggressive as you would think, it is just that the gun has a huge amount of spread, and that is what makes it less strong at range. But, of course, we don't really care about the spread, because so long as we just hit a single pellet on his head, Headshot Booster will proc and will get the damage bonus. This item basically removes the main disadvantage of the gun. It still allows you to chunk people at range. The second item on this list that I end up taking a lot on Abrams is another one that might surprise you, because it's going to be Monster Rounds. And there are a few reasons for that. So uh, yeah, monster rounds. It gives you 35% more damage versus NPCs, 35% damage resist versus NPCs, and also some health and health regen. It's basically the PvE item of Deadlock, as some would say. Uh, something that works great if you're trying to push or trying to jungle. Uh, but in this case, with Abrams, we're taking it also to play a lot more aggressive into the opponents, specifically for the damage resistance that you get versus NPCs, which also counts for Guardians. I've had so many situations where there's a low health enemy or a half health enemy or even a full health enemy under their tower thinking they're safe because the tower does a lot of damage. But then with the regen that Abram has and with this item already in my inventory, I can dive them and survive for way longer than I otherwise would have. And that just gives Abrams way more threat into the lane. Even if you think you're safe, close to your tower, you might still just get jumped upon. It's also really good for burning down the towers once you take control of your lanes. Let's say the opponent has the back, or maybe you just killed him. With monster rounds and being able to tank the guardian instead of your minions for a while, which allows your minions to live longer and also do more damage to the guardians, you're burning these guardians down in, in a matter of seconds sometimes. So yeah, enemies can't really back because they'll give up the lane, but they also can't really stay there because Abrams can just dive their towers without being punished for it really. The next item that I also think is pretty much a must on Abrams is Melee Lifesteal. It gives you a huge chunk of healing every 7 seconds on a melee hit. And if I don't get monster round second, I'll usually get this second. And otherwise, I usually get this first and no later. It gives you so much extra sustain in the lane, especially since you're always sitting in the middle of the minion wave anyway. It is just such a good item early on for Abrams specifically. Then Close Quarters is another item I pick up a lot. It makes you much more lethal up close. And again, weapon damage also works on your melee damage. So this is basically another 15% melee damage up close. And it gives you a beefy bullet shield as well. I also really, really like Spirit Strike. And that goes double in the dual lane. Because again, it's just more melee damage. But it also amplifies the damage of spells that my teammates toss at enemies after I manage to melee them. So what will usually happen is, is that me and my opponents, we start trading a bit. So long as I get a melee off, that will now amplify the damage of my teammate. And I play with a friend that likes to play pocket a lot. So Spirit Strike just makes all of his abilities hit 12% harder. Last up when it comes to mandatory items is Sprint Boots. They're almost a requirement if you want to do anything outside of your lane, if you want to start roaming. Without it, you just spent too much time walking around. You were not going to be able to make rotations fast enough between the lanes to try and go for ganks. Uh, Abrams is one of the slowest characters in the games at the start. So if you're winning your lane, if you're winning super early, or if you maybe just want to go for a quick gank, sprint boots are a must. 
Sometimes I even skip close quarters or spirit strike just to get sprint boots faster, just to help out my neighboring lane for a couple of seconds here and there. That was not necessary, brother, but thank you. <laughs> no, it was not. Thank you, though. I've got a bunch of optional items here as well. We have extra stamina, extra regen, and extra health. I only take these in very specific situations, like if my opponents are particularly slippery, I might take some extra stamina on top of the sprint boots. And if I'm really getting hard bullied in the lane, like I'm up against multiple players, or I'm just not playing that well, or the opponent is just playing out of his mind, uh, I might pick up extra regen or extra health just so I don't lose the lane completely. Uh, maybe my teammates are doing a better job somewhere else on the map. So if I give them enough time, they might be able to help me eventually. Now, just to get ahead of the question as to why we're not taking restorative shot, even though that is technically more healing than extra regen if you use it properly. Uh, and the simple answer is, is that I just don't tend to use it properly. I have reviewed a bunch of my own gameplay and I've done the math. And out of the 10 games where I took restorative shot over extra regen, only two of them actually ended up giving me more healing. What usually happens with restorative shot is that you take it when you're behind to try and heal up, but when you're behind, it's also likely you have to deal with all the minions. So then you end up wasting the restorative shot on minions instead of players or on an orb, and then it goes to waste altogether. If restorative shot would work like headshot booster to where it only procs once you actually shoot at a hero, it would be really, really strong. But as of now, I think extra regen is just a safer pick. With that out of the way though, that was it for the tier 1 items. So now it is time to move over to the tier 2 items, which are really Abram's bread and butter. This is when the hero really starts to come online. He is an early to mid game monster. And especially with these next 6 items, it is going to make him almost unstoppable. And the first up on that list is Kinetic Dash. So yeah, Kinetic Dash. It's a bit of a niche item. It doesn't work on all heroes. What it does is that it makes your next dash jump not consume any extra stamina. So it only costs you one bar instead of two. And when it activates, when you do that dash jump while not consuming that extra bar of stamina, you get a 25% rate of fire buff and you get five bullets back into your magazine. The reason that this item is so good is because the cooldown on it is 10 seconds and the duration is eight. So with a little bit of practice and with another item that we take, which is duration extender, the uptime on this is pretty much 100%. So in theory, this item gives you a 25% fire rate buff and a larger magazine on top of making you more mobile by not consuming as many stamina charges. It allows you to rotate around the map a lot faster. It allows you to clear camps a lot faster. It's crazy good for clearing camps because you can just do a dash jump against the wall just to get the ammo and the rate of fire buff. And it can even be very good if you're split pushing, which you don't always need to be split pushing with Abrams. But if you do happen to find yourself in a situation where you're suddenly at a walker by yourself, just dash jumping against the wall to give you that rate of fire, to give you that ammo to burn down the walker can prove very beneficial. This should almost always be the first tier 2 item that you buy, preferably right after sprint boots. Just trust me, the value on this item, if you use it right, if you get used to using it, it is through the roof. The next item that you want to take a good look at is Berserker, which if you've taken all of the core items on this build and don't have any flex slots yet, then uh, you're going to see that Berserker will not fit. And, and yes, this is for a reason. Uh, I think Berserker can be a very strong pick, even stronger than Kinetic Dash in some cases, if for some reason you find yourself getting stuck in a lane. But Berserker is also one of those things that you end up taking after you've unlocked a flag slot. It's an item that is not too expensive, and especially on Abrams, it stays relatively strong throughout the whole game. The description says that it gives you 5% weapon damage for every 110 damage that you take. But what it doesn't tell you is that it can refresh even at max stacks. So as long as you're at max stacks of 50% extra damage and you take just a tiny bit of damage every 10 seconds, you'll be comfortably sitting at that cap the whole time. This cap also becomes easier and easier to reach as the game goes on because 110 damage early on is of course quite a lot. But as the health bars of everybody and as the damage everybody dishes out increases as the game goes on, you can run into a fight and instantly sit at 50% extra damage, which just makes you so much more lethal. As for the tier 2 vitality items, we have Enduring Speed. Uh, you already know my opinion on this, it's the natural upgrade to Sprint Boots. I almost always take this right after Kinetic Dash. Mobility in this game is king, and Abrams is very susceptible to movement speed slows. This helps with that a lot. And then another vitality item that I love to pick up early on is the Healing Booster. 
which is the only item in the game that somewhat helps against healing reduction items. If the enemies pick up the K or heal Bane early on, and they should if they're going up against an Abrams, you pretty much have to pick healing booster or else you're just going to get clowned on. Duration extender is another must pick up on Abrams, especially after the recent patch with the reduction to the stun duration. Because yes, the duration extender doesn't just increase the range of the stun by allowing you to run for a longer distance, it also increases the time that opponents are stunned to begin with. Without duration extender, opponents might be able to parry a heavy melee right after a stun, but with duration extender, this is not possible. Unless, of course, they have bought Debuff Reducer, but not a lot of players like to buy Debuff Reducer specifically just for Abrams. Then there's also Bullet Resist Shredder, also in the Spirit slot, which is great because you can use it with your Siphon Life to apply a Bullet Resist Debuff of 12% to every enemy in close proximity. You only have to really target them for one tick of damage and they will have their resistance reduced for 8 whole seconds. Bullet Resist, by the way, also applies to melee damage, so yeah, you'll just do 12% extra damage with your melee as well. Situational picks for Abrams are debuff reducer, slowing hex and decay. I very rarely go debuff remover on Abrams because it is just too expensive and I feel like I can survive most of the soft stun locks anyway. But debuff reducer is not that expensive and does a good enough job at getting me out of those situations faster. Slowing hex can be great situationally if you're looking for ganks but the opponents just have too much mobility. You can put this on top of the enemies just before you're going to stun them and it's almost always a guaranteed kill. And decay allows you to 1v1 heroes like Shiv or Kelvin. Assuming, of course, they didn't buy Decay or Heal Bane for themselves. If they do, you better get a teammate to help out. Items that didn't really make the cut here are Melee Charge. Uh, I used to play with this item a lot. It gives you bonus health, health regen, weapon damage, uh, melee damage, longer charge distance, and it reloads your gun when you perform a heavy melee. It's, that, that sounds like about everything Abrams want, right? But uh, the truth is, is that Kinetic Dash is just better, in my opinion. It allows you to clear camps more efficiently and gives you more mobility while also kind of reloading your gun. If charged melee was a spirit item instead, maybe the natural upgrade to spirit strike. If it was that, I would 100% put it in my build every single time. But as of now, there are just too many weapon items that Abram needs to be as strong as possible, and charged melee just doesn't fit in there most of the time. I also don't really like any of the other spirit items on Abrams, really. I've seen people use Cold Front for some of their builds, uh, but I just think Slowing Hex is better. At the stage of the game where you're looking for picks, if you're going for picks, uh, Slowing Hex, just putting it on a single target and disabling not just their mobility abilities, but also their items, is just far more viable than possibly slowing three people at once. At any point of the game from here on out, you can also pick up the spirit and bullet resistances if you feel like you need to. But I usually end up skipping these as much as possible because the resistances aren't that strong until you get the upgraded ones. And if I'm ahead, I'd rather gamble and buy a really strong tier 3 item going forward before putting more stuff into defensive items. I mean, I even skip healing booster sometimes if players don't pick heal bane or decay just to get those aggressive items out faster. If you're already winning, just focus on winning harder is, is something that I've said in a, a previous video of mine and it still applies here. So looking at the tier 3 items, there's, there's not that much here. There are a couple of core items that you are really going to want to pick up. And the first one on that list is always Hunter's Aura, which again reduces the bullet resistance and also the fire rate of nearby enemies by 10%. And the effect is tripled if there's only one enemy hero in range. This I think is an invaluable pickup for getting ganks, as together with the bullet resist shredder, it applies a 38% bullet resistance debuff to the enemies. Because of course the 30% and the 12% stack multiplicatively. But yeah, that means if you're ganking someone and that player alone it doesn't matter if he's got extra health extra regen all the health items in the game he's going to feel extremely squishy because of all the armor reduction i'm actually pissed bro they're all fucking cringe low skill pieces of shit now of course this is also a weapon item but if you're getting at this stage of the game uh, i usually sell headshot booster if i do not have a flex slot yet because well, headshot booster as the game goes on becomes more and more useless. The second tier 3 item that I almost always take, but this is a bit of a preference, is Warpstone. This one I think can be skipped if you really want to rush a tier 4 item or for some reason 
really, really need the improved resistances. But Warp Stone is just one of my favorite items and it allows you to make some absolutely disgusting plays on the backline characters, especially if you combine it with items such as Knockdown, which essentially gives you a second stun. If you're running it down with Abrams and find that the opponents are playing extra safe, but you really just want to ruin their day, you can use Warp Stone as an incredible gap closer and run over them until they don't want to play the video game anymore. Also, after you teleport in with Warp Stone, you get 30% bullet resistance for 5 seconds, replacing the need for some of that bullet armor for just a little bit. There's also some upgrades here that are worth considering, especially if you don't have any flex slots yet, which is point blank, a natural upgrade from close quarters, and life strike, the natural upgrade from melee lifesteal. Both very strong and very good items, but even these I do skip sometimes just to get a tier 4 item fast, because melee lifesteal and close quarters by themselves are still very strong as well. Rolling back to the topic of knockdown and silence glyph on Abrams, I know that some Abrams players don't like to use these because, well, they're spirit items and Abrams does not benefit a lot from spirit items in general. But my opinion on all of this is, is that Abrams is a tank. He needs to be the one to initiate and he needs to have the tools available to protect his backline and to get close to enemies to begin with. My opinion here is that so long as you can silence or knock down the right person and win the team fight, I'd say these items are worth it. Now, I've been talking a lot about rushing tier 4 items, uh, so why don't we just get to the tier 4 items right now? The one thing that you absolutely want to rush every single game if you have the chance is a Vampiric Burst, because this item is completely busted on Abrams, and almost a necessity if you want to be useful in the late game. And the reason for that really is that as the game goes on, your melee, as good as it can be, it tends to fall off pretty hard because there are so many items that other players can pick up that allows them to get away from you or to not take that much damage from your melees. Players will just have more mobilities and tools to work around your combos, basically. Vampiric Burst basically gives you all the lifesteal and damage that you need on your weapon instead. It's 100% lifesteal, 125 with healing booster and a whole bunch of RPM. And then it also gives you move speed, health, and 43% extra weapon damage on top of that. It's all the stuff that you basically need as Abrams to remain scary throughout the end game. And I don't even really think you need any other tier four offensive items if you were to just want to spec for survivability or utility for the rest of your late game items. Dream's over, Hayes. In fact, the only other tier four weapon item that I would ever pick up on Abrams would be Frenzy but that is only after I have already specced heavily into survivability to begin with. Having both the improved resistances, the bullet and spirit resist, and also having Colossus. Or, you know, if I'm generally just extremely far ahead and in the position where the enemies are lacking damage anyway. Frenzy gives you stat bonuses once you go below 40% health, which does tend to happen a lot in team fights. You will get 45% spirit resist, 40% fire rate, and four movement speed on top of the extra ammo, weapon damage and health. And if you stack the resistance with the improved spirit armor, you basically get a 70% spirit resist anytime you fall below 40% HP. And that goes up to 82% if you pop Colossus at the same time. Meaning that even if all the opponents use all their abilities on you, you likely still will not die until of course the Colossus duration ends. Hit please, hit Patron guys, please, please, please. Now, besides Colossus, I also have Unstoppable in the tier 4 items. And I would only really go for this if the opposing team is very heavily specced into crowd control. But because, of course, we also have Unstoppable available as part of our maxed out ultimate, it isn't always a requirement to have. Super, super late game, you can also consider buying superior duration and imbue your shoulder charge stun to make it last even longer. Uh, this also increases the Colossus and Warpstone resist duration and the Vampiric Burst duration. And then you can also back that up with superior cooldown, imbuing your ultimate, taking that from 110 seconds to 75 seconds uh, on the cooldown. And you can just sell Spirit Strike at that point if you need a slot. I see someone appreciates fine craftsmanship. Now I know there was a whole watch list of items and why we take certain things, but uh, now to round up this video, I just want to give you some rapid fire gameplay tips and tricks specifically for Abrams when you use this build because knowing what to buy and what to do is one thing, but putting it to work and getting good with the character, that is something else completely. So let's, let's talk about the big elephant in the room now, which is the parry, because you'll often hear people say that this single button counters the entire hero that is Abrams. But there's a bit more to it than that. 
Uh, first of all is that the parry self stuns your character and has a 5 second cooldown if you don't parry any melee with it. So the short story of it is, is if you parry and you mistime it, you can be in big trouble against somebody like Abrams. Most players answer to that is, well, just don't miss the parry timing, just get good, right? But there are things that the Abrams player can do to force you to miss parries every single time. And the first thing is something that I usually refer to as parry scouting. And what I mean by that is simply walking up to players, charging up your melee, and then looking away last second to make it not connect with the player just to see which players in what lobbies know how to parry and which ones don't. There's basically two types of players in deadlocks, the ones that know how to parry and the ones that don't. And the sooner you can find out which players know how to parry and which don't, the sooner you can figure out how to play against these and exploit their respective weaknesses. You can also parry bait mid combat in teamfights, for example. If you feel like a melee is going to be a bit too obvious to parry, you can just turn away last second. And then if the melee doesn't connect, you can go full monkey mode for five seconds until the parry comes off cooldown. Another thing that I do a lot is charge up the melee from behind cover and then steer it into the enemies mid launch so that they cannot see it coming and that they usually won't have time to parry unless they anticipate you doing that exact thing. I'd say that if you get good with this, being able to melee charge around the corner and even using your scythe and life to mask the charge up sound, you're going to make it really difficult to follow an Abrams around corners because you never know what he might do. If you preemptively parry and he doesn't melee, you waste the parry and Abrams can just punch you for 5 seconds afterwards. And if you don't parry and get meleeed instantly, you lose 30% of your health bar while giving Abrams the HP back. And then there's also the third option for Abrams, which is to use the stun around the corner, which cannot be parried, which then allows you to melee them afterwards anyway, because, well, they're stunned up against the wall. I think this is what separates a lot of the average Abrams players from the good ones. The way that you abuse corners, line of sights, the way that you can mask audio, the way that you can dance around their counterplay options, basically. <laughs> when are they gonna learn to stop running in the fucking doorway, man? <laughs> Never fight an Abrams indoors. I thought people would know by now. No, they don't. And this also goes for Cosmic Veils, by the way. I've gotten so many kills by turning on players behind Cosmic Veils because I'm stepping behind them to make them think I'm running down the staircase or running away, but then I'm actually just right behind the veil to mess them up. I'm... Piece of shit! So low skill! You can also shoot right after you melee to deal a huge burst of damage after you stun them. It's basically a free headshot with all nine of your pellets if you're that close, and it often guarantees the kill because it just does so much damage. And if somehow, some way, somebody does manage to outplay you with a parry right around the corner, you can delay the melee by activating Siphon Life halfway through your charged melee animation which will still make the melee go off but it will just delay it by a little bit it looks something like this and sometimes that delay is long enough to not get hit by the parry at all very very useful moving on to the ultimate ability it also requires a little bit of practice to use it's it's very strong but there's a few weird things with it that you need to get used to for one is, is that you're not actually landing where you intend to land if there's an object in the way that Abrams will collide with. Don't always trust this circle. Make sure that there's nothing close to the center of the impact, above the impact, or else you might miss the stun. This happened to me a few times already. Your ultimate is also great for boss steal since it stuns everybody in the area and makes you unstoppable. Meaning that unless they have a Kelvin bubble or a McGuinness wall or a character with unstoppable themselves, every boss is a free steal if you time it right. The ultimate can also grab people out of the air, which can situationally be good to take out a seven in his ultimate or maybe a Vindicta that's in the air. And I've even managed to get a few Ivies here and there with a lucky ultimate, which has always converted that into a couple of nice kills. That's a bit harder to do though, but still against seven or Vindicta, I think it is very possible to hit these. The ultimate also gets more range the higher that Abrams is, because you can only look down at a certain amount of degrees, I think it's 45. But of course, the higher your character is, the more freedom that will give you. So one thing I always do is I blink up before popping my ult to get more air, so that I have more freedom to choose on where to land. Of course, this is only possible after I've picked up Warpstone. 
Uh, when it comes to your gun, I don't think I've covered this yet, so I'll just do it now. But when you're laning, you can reload your gun continuously while denying orbs. Abrams is a unique gun that reloads bullets individually. If you press reload, you will not instantly be able to shoot, but after you've reloaded just one bullet, you'll be able to shoot whenever with zero delay. So you can pre-fire your opponent's orbs while reloading and still get the orb faster than they can. Your stun can also be used to stun people out of the air, as long as you connect with them in the air and then shove them against the wall, also in the air, because you will keep running even though you're technically in the air, then it will also count as a proper stun. And then last, last stop for the tips, if you're burning down a boss, just punching on repeat and shooting one bullet in between every punch is the maximum DPS that Abrams can put out even if you have Kinetic Dash and Vampiric Burst activated at the same time. The punching is just really strong. This is the fastest way to burn a boss down. And that, that was it for the whole video. That is every tip that I can give you to send you on your way and become a filthy Abrams main such as myself. Or, you know, not really. To be honest with you, I've only played a total of about 70 games on Abrams now. So yeah, it's not even my most played hero, but I've just had a lot of fun with him, which is why I wanted to do this guide first. And I have a pretty decent win rate in high MMR games with him. That is almost exclusively solo or duo queue as well. I consistently feel like I have a lot of impact on this character. And again, I'll have some raw gameplay with just some commentary on what I was thinking during the game coming up tomorrow or the day after on the channel too. So yeah, that was it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was helpful in any way, shape or form. And you will see me very soon. Bye guys.